about this morning, a draft from the Supreme Court leaked regarding Roe versus Wade, the outrage growing over the release of this information and what it could mean if it's true. And today is Teacher Appreciation Day, and we are honoring a Reagan High School teacher who's being featured as our Educator of the Month. I'm going to share his story later in the show. Outside with live cam, pretty typical early May day. Lots of morning clouds, maybe a peak or two of sun. Do we have storms in the forecast? And we'll get an update on how hot the Mother's Day weekend could truly be. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, May 3rd. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, a lot of humidity in the air this morning, and we'll check with Justin in just a minute, but let's go ahead and check with Stephen first. Yeah, good morning, Mark. Stephanie had to jump in at GMSA at 9 because we did have a situation here off 35 at loop 1604. Let's get a closer look at Transguide. Uh, camera a little shaky out there, but we did spot flashing lights that look like they have gone out. So uh, there was a crash that Textile was reporting over near Live Oak at the Forum. Not seeing anything our activity out there, but let's go ahead and show you the slowdown that is still taking place. Again, keep in mind, 35 southbound right there at loop 1604. That crash was causing some delays, but now we are just used to seeing the usual slowdown again right there at the forum. So just watch out and pack your patience right over there. Uh, still have this stall off of I-10 westbound right there at Wurzbach Road. We're not really concerned about it, but just make sure that you watch out for those stranded motorists. Uh, drive down here shows a crash off I-35 southbound at Laredo Street, causing minor delays for drivers. Just remember to take it easy out there. And as we get a one last look at Transguide, things are fine. But uh, let's go ahead and call for that QR code because here's an updated list of closures. You can scan that QR code by opening your camera app on your phone. Tap Tap the center of it and you will be taken to the case at traffic page. And again, that should have a list of the latest closures that are taking place in your area. And of course, anything that could impact your drive time. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Let's look at today's nine at nine. There is outrage over how a draft of a U.S. Supreme Court opinion regarding Roe versus Wade came out. The news broke after Politico said it obtained and verified the draft, but it has not been independently authenticated. Analysts say it's unprecedented breach of Supreme Court secrecy and confidentiality. The draft suggests the justices are poised to overturn Roe versus Wade this term. If this opinion stands as written, states alone would regulate abortions. President Biden continuing to push Congress to pass his $33 billion aid package for Ukraine. Meanwhile, officials are bracing for an announcement from Russian President Vladimir Putin declaring war on Ukraine, a term Moscow has not used thus far. It would allow Putin to send more recruits to the front lines. The Federal Reserve on course to continue raising interest rates to fight inflation. The announcement of at least a quarter point hike is expected when its latest two day meeting wraps up tomorrow. It's all expected to announce plans to pare down its stockpile of treasury and mortgage bonds. Millions of Americans facing the threat of tornadoes in the Great Plains. Nature's fury caught on camera as a new threat of strong tornadoes and large hail is looming over the Great Plains through tomorrow. And critical fire dangers intensify in parts of the Southwest. The Hermit's Peak and Calf Canyon fire is evolving, fueled by powerful wind gusts. The American Academy of Pediatrics reports COVID cases are rising in children. More than 53,000 kids tested positive last week, and that's up 44% from the previous week and marks a third consecutive week of increased cases. The U.S. job market is close to hitting a major milestone in the COVID economic recovery. According to Fitch ratings, the labor force has nearly regained all the positions lost during the pandemic. The U.S. economy gained 431,000 jobs in March, and the report due out this Friday is expected to show nearly the same amount were recovered last month. Here locally, early voting ends today for the May 7th election. Polls are open until 8 p.m. You can find a list of polling locations on KSET.com, as well as previous election-related stories we have done. Election day is Saturday. A potential education crisis. Teachers in San Antonio and across the state are leaving their jobs at an alarming rate. Data analyzed by the Texas Tribune shows a 60% increase from 2021 to this school year in the number of teachers who are breaking their contracts and leaving their jobs before the end of the school year. The biggest reasons, being overworked and dealing with quote unquote, unmanageable expectations. San Antonio Spurs are reportedly eyeing Austin and Mexico for possible home games over the next two seasons. 
The team is allowed to play up to two home games outside of the county-owned AT&T Center per season. However, Bear County Commissioners will discuss today whether to temporarily allow double that number. And that's today's Night at Night. Other top stories we're following today. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says a man was shot who was shot overnight uh, in Southeast Bear County has passed away from his injuries. The detective said deputies went to a home off of Loop 107 near Highway 87 just inside Loop 1604 after 1:30 this morning. They found a man with a gunshot wound and had him taken to Brook Army Medical Center where he later died. The sheriff's office reporting that a woman who was at the house at the time of the shooting was taken in for a statement. Deputies do not have a description of the shooter at this time. The case is still under investigation. Another deadly shooting overnight, this one on the west side. A witness told police that two men were walking or rather talking outside a convenience store around 10 o'clock last night near the corner of Northwest 24th Street and West Commerce when shots were fired. One of the men was shot in the leg and torso. He later died at the hospital. Officers say the suspect ran away after the shooting and at last check had not been caught. And San Antonio police are investigating an aggravated robbery on the city's north side. It happened around 1.30 this morning at an apartment complex on Parliament Street. That's not far from Churchill High School. And that's where officers tell us that a woman was at home when two men she knew came over. Now she says they tied her up and forced her to call her friend to have her come to the apartment. And when that friend arrived, the two men reportedly stole her vehicle. Police eventually caught up with the two suspects after they crashed a stolen car over on Loop 4. 10 near Medina Base Road. Both of the men were arrested. Outside with live cam right now. <clears throat> Lots of clouds, 76 degrees. Let's check in with Justin, who appears to be tracking a cold front. Yeah, there is a front just to our north, but this isn't going to do a lot for us today. It really stays to our north. It does not push through. It'd be nice if we get some cooler air, but that is not in the forecast. Let me show you the setup here. That front sits just to our north. There are some showers along that front. Some of those could push into the hill country this morning. At the moment, though, we don't think that uh, San Antonio is going to get much out of this. Just those cloudy skies. And by this afternoon, it does warm up, warm up and I think we'll see some areas of sun. There's the cloudy skies around San Antonio. 76 degrees right now, 80 at Stinson, 77 Castroville, 72 in Bandera, 74 up there in Comfort. And here is the case at 12 hour forecast by noontime. We should start to see a few peaks of sun 80 degrees and then we're up around 87 88 for high this afternoon. Partly cloudy with some of those breezy southeast Julie winds falling down into the low 80s by 9 p.m. with uh, partly cloudy skies. Pollen count. Everything looks much better today. Molds are moderate 510 grass, oak, pecan, all in the low category and your headlines going forward here. Next few days, we're going to see some storms out west tonight. Those could be strong to severe. Uh, we'll show you that map here in just a few minutes. And then as we get into Wednesday and Thursday, isolated storms possible here in San Antonio and by the weekend, potential record heat for Mother's Day, along with lots of sun. We'll get into all of that. Your seven day forecast is coming up too here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. Your morning headlines. Parents are not happy with a teacher's methods and he's been suspended. Plus a helicopter catches a rocket. And a new way to control higher end and summer camps are expensive. However, they are still filling up fast. David Sears is here this morning. Good morning. Y'all ever go to summer camp? Um, not yes. that I recall. Did not you? a lot. Not yet. Some, Once or yeah. twice. Mm -hmm. I didn't you? know there was this many in the country. Well, a lot more options now. Yeah, talk about that in a minute. But first, let's start with this. The way a teacher was using cotton balls and handcuffs during a seventh grade social studies class at a school of the arts in Rochester, New York, has gotten him suspended and parents pretty upset. According to parents of Janesha Brown, she was given cotton balls and told to pick out the seeds. It was supposed to be part of a lesson on slavery. Another student said this was not the first time the teacher tried something like that. During an earlier class, he pulled out a pair of handcuffs and told a student to put them on or she would end up in the principal's office. Obviously, there are some pretty upset parents. When Brown told her mom, she got on Facebook to post about it and then other parents and students started speaking out. I am angry. I am upset. I am appalled. I am behooved that my child was forced to pick seeds out of cotton. It is very unacceptable. I walked in class and I sat down. He pulled out handcuffs 
It was like, who's willing to put these on? Go, we're all shocked. So he needs to be terminated. Um, he should not be getting this little break on at our expense. Um, and we also hope that his teaching license, license can be revoked permanently. The principal did send a letter to the parents to let them the allegations are being taken as seriously. You know that phrase, it ain't rocket science? Well, this is really rocket science. It took 34 satellites into a space as rocket did. After the booster separated, it started falling back to Earth with a parachute slowing it down. But those things are not cheap. When it hits the water, there's some serious damage to that booster. So the company, Rocket Lab, had a helicopter hovering by to try and save the booster. There was a grappling hook hanging off the end of the line, and wham! Pilot got that chopper in the right spot, snagged that booster in midair. However, due to the load of the booster and other characteristics that didn't show up in testing, the pilot had to let the booster go for a splashdown. Even with that, though, Rocket Lab deemed it successful. They are hoping to be able to recover and refresh boosters to save money. By the way, Rocket Lab is a private company that is in competition with others like Elon Musk's SpaceX. With housing prices on the rise and a new concept and affordable rent is a reality in Palo Alto, California, a three bedroom, two bath house goes for six to eight thousand a month, but it's only 800 a person, thanks to Christina Lennox and her shared housing company co-founder James Stallworth. They find a landlord that will go along with their idea. Then they install pods that Christine, Christina designed. It has the modern creature comforts of home. We told them about our concept and the benefits of it and how it would help people, and uh, the landlord was interested. But our pods are actually eight feet tall. Um, so it gives enough room for um, like bigger people and like also like some wiggle room. Uh, so they're not like the Japanese capsules. Um, they're a little bit larger. Kind of like a dorm. Residents have the ability to decorate and make their pods feel more like home. The company has two houses and 20 residents. The renters share the kitchen and the bathrooms. They are mostly young folks in their 20s just starting out with a job or they've got internships. The shared housing concept is also in Bakersfield. The company hopes to go nationwide. However, there are places that only allow so many renters in a single family house. All right, don't want to scare off any summer campers, but since we've all been dealing with high prices, this shouldn't come as a real shock. Prices for summer camp probably going to be higher than you expect. Some experts are saying 15% more, mostly because of inflation, but COVID protocols are going to be in place in a lot of camps, and that's going to be costly. Plus, after the two years we've endured, parents are probably ready to send the kids off for a week or two or three. So that means <laughs> supply and demand, and that means price hikes. About 26 million kids are expected to roll in camps this summer, and there are about 15,000 camps across the country. Well, there you go, Steph. I mean, you're the only one with kids still at home, so yeah. now you know your options. You're just going to pay a little more. I know. Well, I won't be, like, sending her to a camp like in the video. I, I am looking at the Spurs camp to work on her there basketball skills. There you go. There basketball go. skills. Yeah, yes. but it'll be worth it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Justin has two at home. Is he sending them off to camp? Maybe. <laughs> Now that you mention it. You should see his face. <laughs> and, and would the Spurs hold the camp here or in Austin? A whole oh, other story. They I'm have both. Ooh, whole other we'll story. They have both, Mark. Yeah, oh, yeah. They do. Yeah. Okay, thank you, David. We'll see We're you in a the Austin Spurs. What else do they want? Exactly. We're going to talk about that coming. 9-11, yeah. 76 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. The new tech port center and arena debuting with a big concert last night. RJ Marcus shares a sneak peek of the arena before the show began. Plus... The San Antonio Police Department want more women to join the force. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA at 9 in just a bit. We'll tell you about an event this Saturday where you can learn what it takes. Welcome back. It's 915. The San Antonio Police Department wants more women to join the force, and that's why they are hosting an event this weekend for women in policing. Uh, Sarah Costa is live at the SAPD Training Academy with a preview of what to expect. Hey, Sarah. Hey, good morning, Mark and staff. Yeah, we are at the obstacle course. This is the very first thing that anyone signing up recruits goes through. It's something that the women and that are what coming out this Saturday will do and get a kind of get their feelers out before you physically have to do it. I'm here with Officer Guzman. You have to do this in under what? Uh, you got four minutes and three seconds to complete the obstacle course. Okay, and what's your personal best time? Oh, maybe, maybe 190. Oh, maybe. Now, we'll now we'll he's see. being real modest and stuff. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna start it. Uh, Ready? Ready. Set, go. Okay, we're crawling under this thing. Okay, 
You're going really fast. I feel like he's just like a little spider monkey. I'm just trying. Okay, you have to, they said this is the hardest thing to do. He did it in one try. There you go. Oh. Push, push, push. Good job. This one's easy for me. All right, you finish, Officer Guzman. I'm gonna run over here to Miss Jennifer. I'm not out of breath, I swear I'm not. Great job. Thank you. Okay, so this is just a preview. Correct, this is just a preview. So that beam that you just smashed, that was awesome. It's one of the hardest obstacles that females tend to have. I'm part of the short club, so it's four and a half feet, so a lot of females have issues with this. But this Saturday, you're gonna get a special tutorial from SAPD officers who are gonna teach you the tips and tricks of conquering. It's just a lot of upper body that you have to do. So like Officer Guzman said, four minutes and three seconds to tackle this. It simulates a real life police chase, so you're able to get through it. And it's one of the first things that you do to hopefully join the police academy. Why more women? Why does SAPD want more women to come out and join the force? Sure, so we're always looking to recruit more females. Right now we have 282 females, which makes up about 12% of our force. But females offer a very unique perspective. Females are able to de-escalate a situation and really talk to victims of domestic violence or sexual assault. A lot of victims tend to uh, want to speak to females more. Officer Guzman, I'm, I don't know if he knows that we're still on him, but I think he's trying as hard as you said those, the stairs are pretty hard. Yes, yeah, so it's 26 stairs up, 26 stairs down, and they call it the stairway to heaven. And it's one of the last steps that you do before you do the 160 pound dummy drag to simulate an officer down. Okay. And like I said, four minutes and three seconds. Okay, so this Saturday you'll hear uh, testimonies from other female officers. You'll be able to try out this obstacle course before you actually have to come out and do it under four minutes. Um, some um, firearm training mm -hmm. and how can people sign up? Sure, so all you got to do is go to sapdcareers.com, be a female from 18 to 44 because 44 and a half is the cutoff to join the department. Um, so like I said, you just go to sapdcareers.com under events, just toggle your way to the Saturday, May 7th and it's from 8 to 1, so just sign up. Spots are very limited. All right, Officer Guzman, you, we, you were slowing down. I caught you. Hey, good job. <laughs> Mark's... <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm going to finish in just a bit. Mark and Steph, back to you guys. Awesome job, Sarah. He's not even out of breath. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, that's just like a walk in the park. So I do every day. Good job, Sarah. All right, uh, more details to come. Right now it's 918. And as we like to remind people, this time of year, May is one of our stormiest months of the year, Justin. Typically, the numbers show that, that we see more severe weather in the month of May than any other month. So we have to be prepared for it. There are a couple chances headed our way next few days. Let's go outside for you right now. We've got cloudy skies, nothing imminent. Now, I don't think we're going to see much in San Antonio today. I should point that out. It's probably tomorrow into Thursday that we'll have to keep a little closer watch. 76 at the airport. Dew point is at 71. That's some thick air. South southeasterly winds at about 10 miles per hour. And I mentioned earlier we have a frontal boundary that's sitting just to our north, but it is pushing uh, putting on the brakes as we speak. It's not going to move much farther south. And there are a few showers right along the front, but the, those will probably stay in the hill country. And I really don't think this has much of an impact on us today. Clouds, they'll stick around another few hours, and we're certainly looking at cloudy skies right now. 80 degrees Stinson, 76 Randolph, 77 in Seguin. There are some peaks of sun starting to show up. Seguin over to Gonzales, down to Floresville, and back down towards Carn City. Out west, though, cloudy skies. So how do these clouds impact our temperatures? They'll keep temperatures down initially, but once we do see a little bit of sun this afternoon, that should push us into the upper 80s here in San Antonio. 90 is a good bet. Somerset, Elmendorf down to Floresville, even the brothels in Seguin may briefly touch 90 this afternoon. Uh, looking at the dew point tracker, yeah, it's humid next few days. That uh, doesn't really change, but we notice now by Friday, Saturday into Sunday, we're starting to see some drier air. And that's one of the reasons that we think it is going to get so hot over the weekend. It's, it's part of the equation, but we do know that uh, temperatures are going to be near records both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we'll show you that here in just a, a couple minutes. First, though, we've got to talk about severe weather season. Mark mentioned it. May is one of our busy months. Uh, since uh, well, 2000 to uh, 2021, we've uh, averaged about 528 uh, severe weather reports in the state of Texas in the month of May. And you can see how that compares to April and June. So May is is uh, pretty much prime time when it comes to severe storms. And as we look at the risk today, 
It's primarily right along the Rio Grande. So Del Rio, Queimado, down the Eagle Pass, that's where we could see some storms a little bit later this evening that would be strong to severe. I think this all stays west of San Antonio today. Uh, most of these storms, they tend to really weaken once uh, they cross the Rio Grande. Uh, here is the forecast for 9 p.m. this evening. It does show some big storms trying to move in around Del Rio. We will put in a 30% chance of rain for those out west. They, those quickly weaken, and by tomorrow morning, we're back in the clouds, maybe some morning drizzle. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, not much there, but by tomorrow evening, we may start to see some more showers and storms developing. There's a 20% chance, and I think the opportunity, there's an opportunity that these are a little bit closer to San Antonio. Now, as we get into Thursday, Another weak frontal boundary works into the area. This time, this one gets a little bit closer. And by midday Thursday, Thursday afternoon, I think we'll see about a 30% chance of some storms, some of which could be strong. There's an outside chance here. The better chance for that, though, is going to be to our north and east. After that, it's the heat that becomes the big story. These are the forecast highs for Saturday. 100 here in San Antonio. Places like Laredo could be 107, maybe, maybe up to 109. I think that's a little high. But you get the idea here, very hot temperatures Saturday and Sunday too from Mother's Day. So be prepared for that. Uh, the energy grid will probably be a little bit taxed. Something else to think about. 88 Wednesday, 87 Thursday. There are your chances for rain as we talked about. 96 Friday at the moment. We are going 100 on Saturday, which would tie a record. 100 on Sunday, which would be just shy of a record. We'll be right back. The new Tech Porch Center and Arena on the Southwest Side making its debut last night. Smashing Pumpkins holding the first major event at the brand new $70 million venue. RJ Marquez got a sneak peek ahead of the concert last night. We have this fantastic venue. We have the best sound system, the best LED walls, the best lighting. Crews have put the finishing touches on San Antonio's newest entertainment and live music venue. The new Tech Port Center and Arena is a 130,000 square foot facility at Port San Antonio that will seat more than 3,000 for concerts and esports events. We have 7 to 1 surround sound. Right? We have a 22 foot high, 60 foot wide LED wall. We have JBL line array system. It's really hard to pinpoint because it's all the best of it. The center also represents more growth for our city's tech community and options for people who live in the area. 100 people were hired for permanent jobs at the center and 100 more positions will be available for seasonal and event based jobs. We're going to have a home base that's maybe on a economically challenged south side or west side of town here and and get expose them to maybe some of the things they couldn't they would have to travel for that home base includes a co-working space for startups the san antonio museum of science and technology a food hall and the land gaming center all open to the general public we want that group of people to know that this is their arena right we want this to be their hub come here eat drink and have a good time rj marquez ksat 12 news this arena adds to the $6 billion economic impact Port San Antonio has in the area. There are also plans for a park area for families with a new filtration system that will provide drinking water. Officials there want to make it a new hub for Tejano music and artists. And later this week, there will be a major esports event. Time check 927, about 76 degrees. There's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. After the break, we go behind the kitchen door at a far west side restaurant that was just one point away from failing their Metro Health inspection. 930 cleanliness and certifications, those concerns taking us behind the kitchen door. Metro Health says a restaurant on the far west side was one point away from failing their inspection. We're talking about Grand Tequila Restaurant at 151 near Ingram. The restaurant now needs a reinspection. Now in late March, they got a score of 70. Vesker said they found a dirty ice chest with cooked tortillas inside. Metro Health also said workers were touching cell phones and other personal items, then handling the masa to make tortillas. During inspection, food handler certificates were not presented. In its report, Metro Health says the manager claimed they were in the office, but could not get to the office that day. We do have some good news, though. These restaurants got a perfect score on their last inspection. So you see there El Charro de Jalisco on Marbuck near 410, the Deli Gaddy Sandwich Shop on Wetmore between Thousand Oaks and Stall Road, the Melting Pot on Blanco near Bitters, and McAllister's Deli on De Zavala near I-10. So you can find a full list of restaurants with passing scores on our website at quesa.com.
Back outside with live cam and checking in on current temperatures with meteorologist Justin Horn. It's still warm. We're in the 70s. It's humid. We've got cloudy skies, but there is a difference across the state of Texas, and you'll see that here on the temperature map. So, yes, we're sitting at 76 degrees here in town right now, 80 at Stinson. But watch what happens when we zoom out. It is 46 right now in Lubbock, 41 in Amarillo. There's a cold front there. And uh, you would think that it'll be moving down into our area, but it is hitting the brakes. It is not forecast to make it down here, so it doesn't really have a whole lot of impact on our forecast today. But parts of North Texas will be looking at some pretty chilly temperatures. Here's what you need to know the next few days. Severe storms along the Rio Grande tonight. We'll be watching for those. Del Rio to Eagle Pass. Those are really the main areas. San Antonio is not forecast to see any rain today. Isolated storms and humid though as we get into Wednesday and Thursday. So there are some chances both Wednesday afternoon and Thursday afternoon. And then by the weekend, as you've probably heard by now, some potential record heat. Lots of sun in the forecast too. As for today, cloudy skies through about lunchtime. Then we're up to 87, 88 for high temperature, partly cloudy skies with some breezy southeasterly winds. And again, that humidity is not going anywhere for now, so it stays sticky through the next few days, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Well, this first today are expected to ask county commissioners if they can play a few home games away from the AT&T Center for the next two seasons. Some of those potential sites are Mexico City and Monterey. The city that's raising the most eyebrows is uh, named Austin, just up the road in I-35. David is back with RJ to discuss Ooh. all this. We're going to all take a chill pill and then agree <laughs> yeah. to discuss, right? Take a deep breath. Okay. Yeah. David? Raising some eyebrows for sure, definitely, well, uh, with this proposal here. One of my mm. first thought was, mm. if the Spurs mm. don't put a better product on the floor, it doesn't matter where their floor <laughs> is. True. They can play in any city they want. People aren't going to show up if you're losing. So I would suggest you concentrate on getting playoff caliber team, and then we'll go from there. But... But you for do, now, yes, you do the front um, office stuff as well. Yeah, so that's just, yeah, and, that's and of course, me. I mean, does this kind of come down to the bottom line? I mean, is this kind of a, a business decision that the Spurs are looking at here to extend the brand, to extend the fan base? That's what they've been talking about yeah. for years now, kind of taking over this whole I-35 corridor up to Austin and all the way south of the border to Mexico City. Yeah. So uh, this is an interesting plan here that the, the Spurs are set to propose. But of course, it has to go through county commissioners yeah. and then also through the NBA as and, well. And you know the county commissioners are going to approve it so but I, the Monterey thing and the and Mexico City thing doesn't is, is no big deal because they've been doing that already they sure. are they've already played a, a couple of games and while well, they played the the burnout game yeah. down there and then yeah, they had to yeah, go back yeah. the next season <laughs> when they were they had the fire in the arena remember that yeah but so Mexico City is not is not that big deal the thing that you know really raises the eyebrows is is are we we're going to start playing in in Austin okay, right we're going to play two yeah. games this year we're going to play two games next year then they can come back and they're going to want oh maybe we'll have four games and then maybe eight, eight games. games. Yeah. And the next thing yeah. you know, they're playing a half a season. Is that a possibility? And I think when Dell stepped in, I think that was, you know, if you add it all up, maybe right now the way it looks is, yeah, that was part of the kind of the deal. Yeah, I'm going to come in and buy some of the spur. We're going to play a couple games up here in Austin. We're going to play in this brand new arena we got with for UT. So. And and so and the Spurs have been exploring this for some time yeah. now, including as you David mentioned, Michael Dell became a uh, major investor and strategic partner back in June of 2021. But at the time, they started sending out surveys to season ticket holders, mm -hmm. people that had bought other packages about whether they would travel to games in Austin or what uh, they enjoyed about the South Central Texas area. So it was kind of some vague questions, but you could tell they were kind of poking around a little bit to see sort of if there was a viable option for them to play games up there. And from what Judge Wolf told Garrett Berger yesterday, it sounds like they, they definitely want to do Austin. That, that's a no-brainer for them, for sure, to kind of extend the brand and to kind of uh, get more fans from that part of the area. Would love to see the uh, results of that, uh, of that survey, though. I yeah. mean, what are you going to do with your fans here in San Antonio? Hey, forget you on two games. We don't, you know, are you going to, you want them to travel to Austin? Are you going to have enough fans in Austin to fill the arena in Austin? And so your, your fan base here in San Antonio gets knocked out of two home games. Obviously, you're not going to charge them for those two home games. I wouldn't think mm -hmm. if you're going to charge oh. season ticket holders for two <laughs> home games they don't get to go to or learn mm -hmm. or they got to drive to Austin, then you got a problem. I but didn't I, think I, about I that part. I yeah. wouldn't imagine. Yeah, you go, I mean, when, do, when does it really come back to the fans? What are you trying to do with these fans? True. Especially the ones that have been loyal to your franchise for the last 25, 30 years. Come, I mean, and we know if you've gone to any games, you yeah. know there are fans who have been buying season tickets 
for decades. Mm -hmm. So what do you tell those fans? Hey, drive to Austin to see your Spurs or, you know, forget you on a couple of couple of games. What yeah. how, how does that mm -hmm. all going how's that all going to play out? And from the Spurs perspective, because they yeah. obviously knew that they were going to get uh, some pushback from this. So R.C. Buford uh, released a statement yesterday from SSC saying that they're committed to finding new creative ways to purposely engage and celebrate our fans from Mexico to Austin, continue to expand regional fan base. Kind of what we've been talking about and talking about, you know, that San Antonio's position in a good spot here mm -hmm. to kind of just continue to build the Spurs brand. But as you mentioned, David, there's been fans that have been with them through thick and thin, not just the title seasons. No that were there last year, even, and we saw attendance dwindle over the past couple of years, but some of those fans have been really, really kind of uh, the hardcore fans for a long time. So I don't know if they're up for this plan at all. And, and I get it. I mean, you wanna, you wanna you know, expand your brand, you wanna expand your fan base, but I mean, going about it to a completely another city, I mean, you know, they already got our MLS team. Of course, we showed them what they had a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? Take yeah, it. take that, bam. And they've got a Spurs team already. Yeah. What else do they need? They got the G League team. They, they do. The Spurs. They do. Come on. Now, now the one part yeah. about this is that the Spurs are obviously building this new facility out there in the far northwest yeah. side, the Rocket La Cantera. So that's commitment. To it's Santa well. <laughs> <laughs> that's the it? that's the idea is that they are committed to staying here their training facility this brand new uh, medical offices yeah. business office, commercial it's going to be all out there in San Antonio so that's what they're saying another thing judge Wolf pointed out yesterday was that there's a relocation fee and there it goes all the way up to 2031 2030 mm -hmm. 2031 and it's 84 million to 130 million but if you're Dell Computer, does 130 million really stop you from wanting to move a franchise? Mm, you just got to put that in the budget. Budget. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, that's less some a drop things in the to budget. think about, but we yeah. really don't have any indication whatsoever from anyone that the Spurs organization is trying to lay the groundwork for a potential move. It's just talk like this gets us a little unsettled sure. about of uh, yeah. the big the big game in town, right? Yes. Right. I, and I do think it's smart business to try and tap into the Austin market. Obviously, there's a, a lot of uh, financial gain going on in Austin right now, so I do think it oh, is man. good business sense yeah. to do that as well. But also, but are you risking alienating the fans here that have uh, basically stood okay. by? And, and once again, to wrap, that's that's my two concerns. Right. What happens to the season ticket? or yeah. just the casual fan who wants to happen to go see a game they have that night that they can go and all of a sudden they're playing in Austin that night mm -hmm. yeah. and let's get a winning team on the floor well let's see if maybe today we can get some of those questions answered we'll see what happens yes. okay yes. Yes. Like, what was very it? interesting was it like 79th on the on the uh, oh 76 70, on the agenda, agenda for Barry. <laughs> 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 well, we might know something by five right <laughs> yeah yes. yeah they We're move really fast at commissioner's court hey Garrett <laughs> Berger yeah. pack a lunch and bring a chair <laughs> bring <laughs> it's chair. a long day we'll listen okay. closely yeah. RJ David thank you guys thank appreciate it 939 about 76 degrees watching GMSA at nine and after the break we are going to introduce you to an English teacher at Reagan High School. So he works to make his students feel at home in his classroom and he's KSET's Educator of the Month. I'm going to share his story when we get back. Educator of the Month, brought to you by First Mark Credit Union. Well, he's inspiring his students all while making sure they can be themselves in his classroom. We are talking about Quesa's Educator of the Month, and that is Jonathan Trevino. He is a freshman English teacher at Reagan High School, and that inspiration has come full circle because he tells us it was his English teacher who inspired him to pursue a career in education. Do y'all know what you are saying when you say Mr. T? Jonathan Trevino, or as his students call him, Mr. T, is wrapping up his fourth year of teaching at Reagan High School. Shift! Poems always have a shift, right? And as you can see, he definitely has a connection with his students. Love and life? You know all about them? You already got it figured out? Beautiful. I really want my classroom to be just a safe place for all of my students, a place where they can unashamedly be themselves, and they most definitely are. In the best way, in the best way. We are here to congratulate you on being Educator of the Month. And there was a lot of cheering for Jonathan Trevino as he was awarded the KSET Educator of the Month Award for the month of April. Oh, I'm so excited for him. He's such a great teacher and he's just so nice. He has a great style of teaching and whenever we walk in that classroom, it's more of like a relaxed place than a stress out. I am very much a try hard 
at English and when it comes to English. And so having a teacher that enables me to pursue that, not just academically, but in my free time, I think that's really important. It's really nice to have the opportunity to hire people that have a passion for kids. I, I think that's what I've looked for from the very beginning, and he definitely does. These shoes, every winter I uh, have my students compete to see who has the highest final average and the class that wins gets a fresh pair of white Converse to design. So these are from last year. Jonathan says he has always loved learning, but he also loves helping others learn. And that stems back to when he was a student at MacArthur High School. He credits his teachers for his success, including English teacher Andrew Arnett, who is still teaching there today. Mr. Arnett's there. I email him regularly. He's one of my, he was my junior teacher for English. Very good. He's a big reason I wanted to become so, a teacher myself. Beautiful job on those, beautiful job on those. And congrats again. You can find Jonathan's story on our website at kset.com. And also this week is Teacher Appreciation Week. And to honor our educators, there are quite a few restaurants and businesses offering deals from now through Friday. So you can find a full list of those deals again on our website. Okay, we truly appreciate all of our teachers. By the way, Steph mentioned after she shot this story, they brought up the other Mr. T yes. to the students, and of course, they it they, went right over their heads yeah, they were like, faster <laughs> than you could cut a mohawk, right? Yeah, we were, we were there recording, and we're like, do, do they realize what, what they're calling you? And, and they, they, they didn't. didn't. They, they do didn't. now, though. They know. Yes, we, we, we know. Well, actually, well, no, no, no. One of the students was like, hey, wasn't that the guy with the faux hawk? I was like, no, that was not a faux hawk. That, that was, was a, a real mohawk. mohawk. <laughs> yes, yes. The other Mr. T, That's but congratulations kind of yes. to Reagan's Mr. Yeah. T. Yes. yes. The A team. Hey, and by the way, teachers do so much. So this, they, they deserve everything that's coming to them this week for Teacher Appreciation Week. Agreed. Thank you very much. Uh, let's take a look at the state, guys, and uh, show you where temperatures are sitting right now. 76 degrees at the airport. You got 40s up in the Texas Panhandle. It, it's cold up there. We've got a cold front that is trying to seep south, but it is, as we said earlier, hitting the brakes. And I don't think that this is going to come through San Antonio. It gets close, but not close enough. And so that cool air is going to stay just to our north. There have been a few showers right along the front, but they've been very light. And most of those are staying to our north as well. With some thunderstorms across parts of Louisiana and far east Texas, you see the cloud cover. We're starting to see a few breaks here around San Antonio. We should see quite a bit more as we get into the afternoon. This morning cloud cover will slowly scatter out and we'll get uh, temperatures to warm up too with that added sunshine. Uh, 76 right now, 78 New Braunfels, 73 Kerrville, 73 in Fredericksburg, 78 right now in Catula. Places like Bernie State sitting at 73, 75 Kingdon Lake, 77 at Randolph. It's been a warm start and it will be a warm afternoon. Uh, at the airport, uh, mid 70s, southerly winds at about 11 miles per hour and sky high dew points. Severe weather risk today, not here in San Antonio, but it is uh, there out west. So Del Rio, Camado, Eagle Pass, Brackettville, La Prior down to Carrizo Springs. That's an area we'll watch this evening. There could be some storms crossing in from Mexico that will have the potential to be strong to severe. Gusty winds, large hail will be the main threats. So let's look at it here on the forecast. Uh, by 5 o'clock today, the models don't show a whole lot, but by, say, 9, 10 o'clock, here we go. Those storms are crossing over, and uh, there's going to be about a 30% chance of some of those storms affecting places like Del Rio and Eagle Pass. Again, not here in San Antonio. We are not expecting much new wave rain today. We will get some drizzle perhaps tomorrow morning, some clouds to start. This is Wednesday, uh, tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock. And then by the afternoon, again, not much there. I think there is potential for a few isolated storms though tomorrow afternoon. We're going to put in a 20% chance, and these could be a little bit closer to San Antonio. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. Probably our best chance for rain is going to arrive Thursday with yet another front. This one will get a little bit closer, and so it brings our rain chances up some 30%. The best shot for storms is going to be to our northeast, but we do have the potential, and with the atmosphere the way it is, there could be a couple of strong storms. So that's another time frame we'll have to watch. As we get into Thursday night, things quiet down, and from there, we head into a dry forecast and a hot one, too. Here's a look at the rain chances. If uh, we, we, We'll break them down here for you. Wednesday, 20% chance for Wednesday night, 20% chance. 30% chance, our best shot on Thursday, and then just a small chance Thursday night before rain chances go away. And we've been talking about the heat. It's worth showing again, though that on Saturday. By Saturday, we should be near 100 degrees, which would tie a record 
most of the state is going to be underneath uh, this very these very hot temperatures. So no matter where you go, there's going to be some probably records going down on Saturday and potentially on Sunday too. So 88 tomorrow, 87 Thursday, 96 by Friday, and there are those triple digits over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Mother's Day will be a hot one. We do get a little bit of a cool down on Monday. We'll be right back. A new report from the White House shows there was a 20% spike in new small businesses last year and this small business boom. Hispanic entrepreneurs had the fastest rate of new businesses in more than a decade. These companies are creating more jobs, more than ever, and one of them is right here in San Antonio. The Box Street All Day started as a food truck and catering company, but opened its first brick and mortar less than six months ago. And they're not just catching the attention of San Antonians, but the president as well. Alicia Beretta has a story. Hey guys, want to check in just how everything was? I know you had, how was the pancake? Business is booming at the heart of Hemisphere. San Antonio really showed out and showed us so much love. The Box Street All Day is owned by Latinos, Chef Edward Garcia III. Thank you guys for coming in, we appreciate it, thank you. And Daniel Trevino. We wanted to make sure that we build a brand, build a name for ourselves. They began with a team of five and have since expanded to more than 50 establishing a name that has reached the White House. I still like, is this, was that real? It was so quick, the turnaround was so quick. What are your ideas and run with it, <laughs> yeah. The team, including creative partner and interior designer, Caroline Garcia Bowman, attended the Small Business Roundtable at the White House last week. We were able to really share with President Biden is not only were we able to be successful because we're a small business, but we were successful because as Latinos, we always learn to persevere. The city shut down the same day their loan was set to arrive and eventually forced Garcia Bowman to scrap the original layout. One of the aspects that came from that redesigning was this bar area. If things were ever to shut down again, the counter would be the perfect space for to-go orders. They also had a chance to advocate for more tools to help small businesses like theirs succeed. I think as kind of the world moves forward, they're really realizing that um, we're in the time of technology. Um, and a lot of the times, technology makes the ease of access a lot easier. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Let's take a quick look at Transcat right now. With some slowdowns on the northeast side just 10, 15 minutes ago, but it looks like it's getting a little better, Steph. Yeah, 35 and 410 looking good right now. Cloudy skies now, some breaks this afternoon up to 88. Some small rain chances next couple days, I think tomorrow afternoon and then again Thursday with a weak frontal boundary. But after that, things dry out and the temperature cranks up. We'll be watching for a few strong storms tonight, too, out west. Well, look at those mm -hmm. records for Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> at least one of them maybe could be tied. In jeopardy. We'll be close. We'll be yeah. close. But, uh, man, that's, that's some big-time heat for Mother's Day. Too close for comfort for May. Uh-huh. Yeah. Triple, triple digits on you. Mother's Day. Yeah, that's a, that's a surprise I was waiting for. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's get some storms out of the way so Mom can enjoy her weekend. Yeah, yes, it'll be agreed. nice regardless. Indeed. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Have a great day.